All right. So Ken, you have been the director of Shark Tank for a very long time. Uh, you've guided it to, uh, I think, three Emmy wins for a uh, reality program. This is your first Emmy nomination for directing the series. Um, so to be in the Emmy race for a show that uh, you've been one of the guiding forces behind for such a long time, what does that mean to you? Well, it's very exciting. Um, we're, we're thrilled. I'm happy for the show. You know, I, I consider myself just a part of the team. And of course, the individual um, accolade and, and recognition is nice, but it's sort of a victory and, and somewhat of an acknowledgement for the whole team, crew, lighting, art, tech, um, and the staff as well. Of course, the show's been recognized for um, the last four years, winning the Emmy um, for a reality show. But this is, uh, this is a nice recognition for everyone else who works on the show and, and just a little more... Um, a little more of an um, acknowledgement that there's so many people behind the scenes. So we're very proud of the show. You have a lot of uh, experience uh, directing reality competition programs, uh, yeah. you know, like the Bachelor franchise and a lot of game shows. Uh, yeah. What about Shark Tank stands out? I mean, the show's had a longevity for, you know, almost a decade now. What about it stands out? Well, it's, it's sort of interesting. It's, it's really a true hybrid in the sense that um, it's, a, it's, it's a reality show, but obviously takes place on a stage. So it has that <laughs> sort of live stage um, visual element and we, and we cut the show and we treat it as such, but, um, but we're really just telling stories. In the end of the day, we're all just telling great stories and with our unbelievably talented sharks and the great casting and the great producing, we bring in these entrepreneurs and, and change their lives. And the show is about dreams and it's a decade of dreams. This is our 10th season. Um, but I love, love working on the show because it brings some of the field reality moments that we get on bachelor and some of sort of the live game show elements that we get on some of my other stage shows and sort of brings them together into this, um, really nice um, melding of, of the two worlds. Now you are uh, nominated uh, for directing episode 903. I'm assuming that's the third episode of the ninth season. Um, what about that episode stood out for you personally? What made you choose that as your, your Emmy submission? Uh oh, now I have to remember exactly <laughs> what that episode was. <laughs> uh, shoot, that's a very good question. Um, trying to be I'm so confused because I, I think I, I think I submitted a different episode for a different award. Um, well, I'm looking at the, uh, I can't get too specific on the answers to that, but I can tell you that in the four pitches, you know, we deal with four companies in the hour and it, it's just always an emotional roller coaster because there goes up and down. And even the crew, obviously we don't know what's going to happen because it's all part of the discovery for the sharks. So, um, as the pitch unfolds, um, we go along for this ride and it's really a journey because we think things are down at the very end. Um, someone comes in with a deal and the whole thing turns around or vice versa. Um, sometimes deals go south at the last minute or counter offers are, are uh, rejected. Um, and so I, that's really the beauty of the show for me. And that episode is no exception. I'm looking at, uh, it, it's interesting looking at uh, IMDb and seeing uh, how they are described on their, uh, the entrepreneurs. Oh, yeah. uh, we have uh, Delighted by Hummus, yeah. uh, Soul Mender, Ice Shaker, and Benji Locke. Oh, I don't know if that helps right. unlock any memories for you. <laughs> yeah. I, I do. I think, I think we ended up airing that first. I think that might have been our premiere episode of the season. Oh, okay. but, but I do remember very emotional content. Um, Benji Locke. I mean, the, look, this episode's no different than any of the episodes, really, which is the heart and, and lifeblood of the story, which is the entrepreneur laying his soul on the line, burying his soul, giving away a piece of his baby, um, and that negotiation, and that it, it's a very difficult thing, and, and the rejection, and sometimes not rejection, but sometimes the fact that a deal isn't made can be devastating. But sometimes those companies go on to great things, as we uh, as we learned recently uh, this season with one of our guest sharks.
But um, Ice Shaker was really one of my favorites because it was uh, Chris Gronkowski and we had the five brothers and Rob and the others. And that was just a blast. It was just so fun working with them. And they're such great television. And Chris is such a great guy. And the company did well and I think um, is flourishing now. So I, I do remember that specifically. That story was just, you know, fantastic. Uh, going into your 10th year, I, I'm guessing you've kind of got things down to a rhythm in terms of how you direct the show. Mm -hmm. So take us through the uh, production and the shooting of an episode of Shark Tank. Sure. Um, it's really very simple. We don't sort of overdo it. I mean, the story is just, you know, the story is everything. And we serve the content, which is the sharks and their discovery process of this company. Um, and... Um, we get a little pre-pitch day where we get to sort of bring the entrepreneurs in and get them a little familiar with what's happening on stage and hear a little bit about their company and work with their props and some of their visual presentation. But it's really up to them. I mean, in the end of the day, we don't tell anybody um, what to say or do. We really, you know, it's, it's your company and you need to present it in the best light possible. Um, but I also want to make a visual. I want to make it interesting visually. So um, then we bring it onto the stage the next day and I work with my crew on lighting and sound effects and music and, um, and camera moves and, and whatnot in terms of how to best service the story. But again, it really unfolds live. So a lot of it is dictated by where the story goes. And um, after 10 years, we've gotten pretty good at telling that story. We have an idea of the relationship between the sharks, which is important. And that also sort of informs what kind of coverage and what kind of shots we, uh, how we, how we tell that story within the story, which is the sharks' relationship among each other um, and between each other. Um, but I also want to, I also want to uh, shout out to Post because our editors and all our story editors and our post and uh, and our and our post people do such a fantastic job, sort of weaving together the stories and condensing down what can be a long pitch into a, a shorter time period for, for air, airing purposes. Um, but with all the, all the goodness and all the juicy story and all the content that, you know, viewers love. So a, a big, a big, uh, a big pat on the back to our post department who has been recognized in the past, I think was this year, but, but again, is a, is a huge part of our show. And how have you as a director um, evolved in your technique, if you will, um, I mean, stylistically with the show and, and things like that. How have you evolved over the 10 years that you've been doing it? Well, we, we take we take a few more chances, a few more chances and we go for a few more, you know, specialty items. But in the end of the day, um, it's really uh, it, it, it's in, it's an interesting show because visually it's not spectacular. There's not a bunch of craziness and, you know, we'll have some we'll have some stunts, we'll have some dancing, we'll have some effects. But in the end of the day, um, it's a fairly it's a fairly intense show with the sharks and the entrepreneur, and it's really just how through camera movement and design and shots design and editing we can sort of create more tension. We can just add to that story. Um, we revamped the set uh, two years ago, and so we have this beautiful new set, and it's given it sort of a modern and and important, expensive look. Um, and I'm very proud of that and, and I'm proud of the look and just dialing in all the shots and all the lighting. Um, I give also a great deal of credit to our production designer and our lighting designers and stuff, um, because that's a big part of the show. I think the look of it is very, um, it's very appealing and that makes my job so much easier. I have to wonder, I mean, um, how does directing something like Shark Tank, which is so much about entrepreneurship and, uh, you know, as you said, kind of stage bound to this, you know, these these people sitting and, and watching these pitches. How does some, directing something like that compare to directing, say, The Bachelor or The Bachelorette? Right. I mean, because they're so, they're so different shows. Sure. And I have to wonder, I mean, how do you, you know, uh, give that, you know, what different tools do you use for something? Right. Um, it, it's very different. They're all different. Family Feud, the Steve Harvey's different, and Love Connection, and The Proposal. Um, they're all very different. And in the end of the day, it's really the same exact goal, which is to tell the best story in the most interesting way, entertaining way. And, and that's really it. But the tools do change somewhat. For instance, um, on Bachelor, I don't have a control room per se. I'm not in a truck. We build out a little... Um, you know, control room, if you will, but I don't do a line cut. 
I don't switch between cameras live and we're shooting more footage, right? So there's a little more post intensive. Um, but again, with the crew, I'm telling them what I think will happen. And then we're just very nimble. We're on our feet, much more handheld, um, a different style. Um, but, but again, all in the service of the content and the story. Um, with Feud, on the other hand, we have a studio audience. Um, so that adds another delightful element. Um, but that's cut and treated more live. Um, I'm currently here in Orlando, Florida, shooting Deal or No Deal, which is a, uh, coming back on CNBC and with Howie Mandel and the models and the briefcases. And again, we treat that uh, as more of a live shoot. And Shark Tank falls somewhere in the middle. Um, I do a line cut from a truck. We incorporate, we do the mix, and we do everything output. We could air it out of the truck, but uh, we take it to post and have the luxury of cobbling together the stories and cutting them down a little. Um, so it falls somewhere in between the, the sort of the live or the live game shows and then The Bachelor, which is a, you know, wide open, straight reality. Um, and, and again, the tools change somewhat. Um, my, my, uh, the way I approach it changes somewhat, but it's more technical um, because in the end of the day, it's like this or this or this or two shot. It's all about how visually I'm going to tell that story. Um, and, and, and in the end, the tools are largely the same. What do you think attracts people to these kinds of reality competition programs? I mean, be it The Bachelor or Shark Tank or, or Family Feud. I mean, where does the inherent interest in that come from? Well, I, I think they're, they're a little different, right? Because I think Feud, uh, you know, is, is great content, great families and Steve and great comedy and play along ability. That's, you know, same thing here with Deal or No Deal. It's that, that play along factor at home is just immense. And it's endless on those two shows. Um, with Bachelor, I think there's a little bit of a guilty pleasure. There's the travel element. There's the romance. There's the proposal and the, and the, and the hope and the search for love, the journey. And then there's also the, the rejection and, and some of that story and drama um, obviously clearly connects with some of our viewers, most of our viewers. Um, Shark Tank's really, you know, it's sort of that funny, it, it's an amazing show because it's so smart. And my 94 year old grandfather watches it with my 18 year old son. And there aren't a lot of shows that you can say that about. Uh, we always walk to our cars at the end of the night, the crew, and we look at each other and like, we feel smarter somehow that we were there that day because we were around really smart, smart people. And we learn so much every day. It never gets to be the same, even though, uh, you know, the show hasn't changed dramatically. Um, the stories change and, and the strategies and the sharks learn and the sharks have changed. Um, we have guest sharks, which brings a lot of life to it as well. Um, and so it's, um, it's a funny thing, but I think it's that, like, why didn't I think of that moment with Shark Tank, right? And deep down, I think everyone has a little entrepreneur in them for sure. Um, and, and if you're, and if you don't, you certainly love to see it in other people. It's such a, it's an amazing thing that, that American dream, that idea that, and the sharks all came from nothing. They really did, right? They all built themselves up. So that idea that you or I could come up with a, a, a fantastic idea to do a video conference that hasn't been done before, say, and, and turn it into something huge. I think that's just, I think that's a very appealing and, and very captivating um, to an American audience. Well, Ken, thank you very much. Uh, congratulations on your nomination. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thanks so much. My pleasure.